All right, hey, it's Rob, and uh, I did a video uh, over the weekend sitting in this car talking about uh, the future of electric cars and just asking the question in 40 years, are we going to have any electric cars from this era still on the road? Because I am sitting in a 1983 Mustang, which turned 40 last year. It's my second car. I don't drive this to work every day or whatever, but it happens to be just a clean, good running, low mileage example, less than 75,000 miles on this car, which someone pointed out was less than like 2,000 miles a year or whatever. So this car hasn't been, you know, restored or overhauled or anything like that. It's just been maintained over the years and I'm sure things have been done to it. I know the car was rebuilt and, uh, things like that. I've done a lot of tune-up stuff, plugs and wires and uh, distributor and, uh, you know, simple stuff like that. Um, it just seems to be, you know, a reliable mode of transportation even 40 years later. And again, I don't drive it too much. But someone left a comment and they said, oh, well, he didn't even start the car. So I'm going to start the car and drive around. And I'm going to talk about uh, what it's like driving a 40-year-old car. All right, here goes nothing. Got to put the glasses on. All right, so we'll go once around the loop here, and uh, I'll just give you my general impressions of what it's like driving a car that is four decades old. I kind of forget about it sometimes, but, uh, you know, I'm at that age where I think of the year 1983, and I think, well, it's not that long ago, is it? But, yeah, it's 40 years and some change. Anyway, so... Uh, this 83 Mustang is a V8 5.0 with the five-speed transmission. It is a pleasant car to drive. It has good pickup. I mean, in its day, it was a quick car. Today, compared to electric cars and things like that, it's a dog, of course. I mean, I could probably be outrun by a Corolla or something, uh, you know, today. But uh, in any case, uh, it's really a pleasant, enjoyable car drive brakes are good the clutch is good i think it's original as far as i know and uh like i said zips around has good pickup uh you know i don't really ever think oh boy i wish i could you know do some work on the engine and you know get another 50 horsepower out of it or whatever i don't think of that at all i mean the car is great as it is and uh so yeah again when i look around and this is relating to the video that uh I made it over the weekend. Uh, there aren't all that many things in this car that scream 1983. I mean, there aren't all that many things in this car to begin with. So uh, there's not a lot of high tech going on here. It does have a wood grain dash, which kind of looks, uh, you know, a little bit retro, I think, at this point. But uh, other than some trim and stuff like that, uh, I'm sure originally it had a cassette radio or maybe just an AM FM. It's been swapped out for a more modern CD player, but even CD players are pretty retro at this point. And uh, other than a digital display down here, which you can't see, which has a digital clock, and it has a little button that lets me know the status of a few different items in the car. I can't see with the sunglasses. Uh, let's see if I push it. I've got, uh, I can check my tail lamps, my brake lamps, uh, my washer fluid, and my headlamps, just as far as uh, if they're still passing signal and if they're still working. And they indeed are on this car. Pretty much everything works on this car. Um, again, like I said, it's just a low mileage example, 75,000 miles, just hasn't been beat up, hasn't been abused, uh, hasn't been used all that much at all it's had multiple owners and uh you know again i only know a limited amount of the history i know the last couple owners of the car i bought it on facebook maybe three years ago and uh 
to my utter uh, shock and amazement, you know, it's just been a good, solid, reliable, you know, good running car. I uh, really haven't had any, knock on wood, issues to deal with. And I know that on a 40-year-old car, you know, it's just around the corner. Anything could happen. Obviously, if I use this thing every day as a daily driver, well, those issues would come up pretty quick. I'm sure. Matter of fact, at some point, my wife suggested when she needed a new car, she'd just drive the Mustang for a while. And I was like, yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's good for the weekends. It's good for a nice, beautiful cruise on a uh, sunny day like today. But, uh, you know, I've got to at some point, uh, you know, admit the fact that, hey, it is a 40-year-old car, and, uh, you know, I don't want to use and abuse it and start to rack up expenses on a second vehicle. I don't need that financially, or I don't need the headache either, so uh, I seem to just drive it enough that it stays uh, lubricated, and, uh, you know, it's, all the fluids run through it. Uh, you know, if you leave a car like this for a long time or any older car, you know, things start to seize up, freeze up, whatever. You start to have issues. But uh, I seem to have hit that sweet spot where I drive it enough that I feel like I get a good amount of enjoyment out of it and it just doesn't really cause me any trouble. Now, this car replaced a 1964 and a half, what they call a 65, but an early really early 64 and a half Mustang. It was actually number 2501 off the line, I think. And uh, it's a beautiful white coupe. It was just a three-speed, six-cylinder. Really nice car that had been restored. And, uh, you know, it, it was, uh, you know, the slowest, <laughs> you know, lowest horsepower model you could get from a Mustang. But I didn't care about that. It was fine. It was enjoyable to drive. But... The advance, you know, in automotive technology between the mid-60s and even this point, the 80s, was really pretty incredible. I mean, that car was like driving a tractor. It had 13-inch wheels, it rattled and bounced around, and uh, had a little thin steering wheel. Didn't have synchros on the gears, I don't think. Uh, you know, it did have an alternator. It had been changed. It would originally have come with a generator. So it just was a really just a true antique vehicle and drove that way. I mean, to the point where I just didn't enjoy taking it out as much as I really could have, even though it was cool to have it seen out and uh, you know, be out and about with it and take it to the car shows and things like that. But, um, you know, like I said, I didn't go for a lot of, uh, you know, pleasure drives in it because it just wasn't that pleasurable to drive I don't think there was anything particularly wrong with it it just was really really old I mean come on I'm really really old and it's older than me so that's a car approaching 60 years old now just crazy to think about but this car which is 40 like I said it was a big jump by this point it has disc brakes has wide you know big tires it has uh, you know just the creature comforts and uh, the way even the seats are designed and things like that, it's just a much better place to, you know, spend spend a few minutes cruising around. And, uh, you know, I don't feel like when I get out of this car and I get into my 2022 Maverick truck that it's like a huge difference. You know, it's basically the same experience. I mean, it has power steering and uh, it's, you know, fairly easy to drive and get around and the brakes are pretty good i mean they're not as good as a car with abs i'm about to honk at this guy here let's go buddy and <laughs> but you know like i said i don't really you know leave this car wanting for much and uh, you know it zips around you know pl plenty good of course it's got an eight cylinder engine of course it sucks gas i have never checked but uh, i'd be shocked if i was getting like even 16 miles per gallon it sucks it down pretty good but uh, again I don't drive it all that often and uh, not really an issue for me because I just don't get that much use out of it and so whatever every month or month and a half or whatever I gotta go run and I run it on the uh, gas without the corn oil in it or I run it on the no ethanol gas uh, the ethanol is pretty bad for these cars. It'll eat up the lines and things like that. These cars were not made to run on ethanol. 
So uh, I try when I can to put that in here and uh, haven't had any problems thus far. So hopefully that's working out well. And um, yeah, other than that, like I said, the experience uh, you know, isn't much different than any other car. Of course, it's convertible. It's great. It's nice to be out in the sun and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, it just leads back to that video that I made where, you know, I was discussing uh, the future of all electric cars, the Mustang Mach-E, the Tesla, and, you know, are these cars even going to be serviceable 40 years from now? Even if I bought a Tesla and I only drove it a couple thousand miles a year like this car, and in 40 years I had 70,000 miles, I, you know, I don't know what's, what's the state of the battery at that point. Boy, it's really hard to say. We just haven't, you know, had widespread use of electric cars for long enough. Of course, we've had electric cars forever since the 1900s or whatever, but uh, with the modern battery formulation and everything, I don't know. I read an article today that said that uh, Tesla cars, after a year, they're only running, some of them, up to 65% of the uh, quoted range. And at 70% of the quoted range, you're supposed to be able to get free battery from Tesla. So is Tesla all of a sudden going to have to replace thousands and thousands of batteries, which are, uh, you know, below the specification? It was an interesting article. And... Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, they just haven't been around long enough to uh, really say, you know, what the longevity is on an electric vehicle, uh, even one that isn't driven a lot of miles or whatever. If, like I said, there was a comparable Tesla from 2014, say, and it just wasn't driven that many miles. Like, is it going to be a serviceable vehicle in, in you know, 20 years and 30 years? It's really hard to say, uh, you know problem is technology marches on I think lots of people have had the experience if you bought any kind of modern car in the last 10 years when you had a connected service like OnStar or whatever and the car had a built-in 3G modem and uh, then you get a notification and they're like well we're sunsetting 3G oh what's that mean well it means that you know you can't have your OnStar or whatever uh, I actually had a uh, Saab Vigan convertible, which was a beautiful, wonderful, fast, cool car. And it had OnStar on it, but it had an analog cellular signal. And of course, that was totally useless when we switched over to digital. That was a 20 year old car. But um, yeah, so the issue is that a lot of this stuff just, you know, at some point uh, doesn't, you know, <laughs> function. Uh, anymore as uh, new technology is replaced and uh, it's just not supported and it reminds me of a story about my grandmother <laughs> who kept her rotary dial phone like well into the 90s i don't know anybody else at that point who had a rotary dial phone i had a touch tone phone in college and you know by the 90s or maybe it was even into 2000 i don't know she kept her rotary dial phone active and uh, she refused to get a touch tone because it cost like five dollars more a month or something and she didn't want to run up a big bill that's what she'd always say when she called back in the good old days when you had to pay for long distance i don't want to run up a big bill but uh anyway at one point they called her and they said sophie we have to take your rotary dial phone away why because you are the only one on the machine in the whole city with the rotary dial phone and the machine broke and we can't fix it anymore just so you can have your rotary dial phone. So it's kind of the same thing with cars and the modems and the things that just eventually, you know, become uh, outdated and outmoded and uh, then eventually, you know, get to the point where they're just not supported anymore. And uh, then what do you do? So I mentioned this in my other video, but you know, 20, 30 years from now, I mean, is your phone even going to be able to interface with the systems of the car? You know, these cars get over-the-air updates. Are they going to be able to get over-the-air updates with the systems they currently have in place, you know, 20 years from now or whatever? Is it going to matter because they're all going to be self-driving and whatever, or maybe they'll be flying around in the sky? It's really hard to say where it's going to go. But, uh, you know, we had this big push for electric cars for a long time. Now we have a big backlash against electric cars and uh, 
they're out there and they're really cheap there's some good deals out there because uh, there's really been a lot of negative press about them and you know whether it's really something that is helpful to the environment and uh, over the long term i think electric cars are a good deal environmentally and they put out less carbon or whatever but it's over many years and uh, you know initially i think electric cars are worse for the environment the processes that uh, you know they used to make them or whatever are actually more harmful to the environment eventually it evens out if you drive one enough or whatever but uh, that's the story with that and hey we're back in the garage so like i said perfectly enjoyable drive in a 40 year old car sometimes i just got to pinch myself and say oh man look at that this thing continues to just run well and do what a car does all right oh there goes my mic so uh that's all the uh, yammering on i'm gonna do for now and uh we'll see you soon thanks bye